When guests walk into the house of Martin Robinson, they are shocked to find the place crawling with ants, frogs, and even slugs in the shower. But Martin believes his little friends make perfect housekeepers. Homeowner Martin Robinson knows his bugs and amphibians. In fact, he understands them so well, he has them cleaning his house. They do quite an efficient job of it. For more than a decade, Martin has studied bugs at Sydney's Australian Museum. But his obsession to create a home that's a self-contained, bug-filled battleground has been a dream since he was a kid. I'd certainly always known that for every uh, animal or plant, there's usually something that will eat it. I've just encouraged the things that eat the, the, the pests and the plants that I don't want. And while to the untrained eye, it may look overrun with crawling creatures, Martin's home is actually a carefully thought out and well-maintained biosphere of insects and amphibians. Here's how it works. In the grounds around the house, spiders control mosquitoes. Ants are brought in to eat termites. Of course, wasps are then used to control the ant population. To guard the inner perimeter of the house, Martin employs the stealthy night-crawling gecko. The geckos come out onto the walls of the night time and they provide sort of like a predator moat around the house. So any insect like a cockroach or um, a moth or a beetle that wants to get inside the house has to run the gauntlet of the geckos and usually they don't make it. The lucky insect that actually makes it through the geckos and into the house find their problems are just beginning. If they do manage to get inside and the frogs eat them. And seen here through the use of special night vision cameras are the shower slime eating slugs. Working seven days a week, these night creatures keep the bathroom spotless, clearly enjoying their work. They're about the only things I know that will actually clean the, the silicon liner of mold. Martin admits, at first he had a hard time getting the right balance of predators and prey. But now things are running smoothly in the house where Mother Nature does the dirty work. It's become far more stable and there's, there's very little problem and very little we have to do. There's just one final task Martin needs to train his insect helpers to complete. If it could do the dishes as well, it would be great. Martin has been so successful at keeping his house free of unwanted pests, he sometimes has to bring home cockroaches just to keep his frogs fed. Next, find out why these men risk getting their arms and legs torn off, riding gigantic, out-of-control logs. Plus, the high-tech motorized skates that'll send you soaring through traffic. And one muscle man's attempt to make history, towing a 15-ton truck loaded with rowdy college kids. It's all ahead on Ripley's. Amazing stories and unbelievable people. Ripley's Believe It or Not. After six months of trial and error and a little Yankee ingenuity, machine shop owner Tim Gendel develops a prototype for a one-of-a-kind mode of transportation, motorized inline skates. Tim created moto skates modeled after motorized go pads, and those who've tried them are instantly addicted. After getting the hang of inline skates, users have discovered they can cruise at an astonishing speed of 40 miles an hour. The skates, which are just hitting the market, sell for a pricey $700 a pair. The standard two-stroke engines allow for plenty of tricks, including clearing 12-foot concrete dividers. The economical moto skates can get up to 100 miles per tank of gas, but if you plan to take these skates for a spin, don't leave home without your helmet. Believe it or not. In America, we have log rolling contests. In Japan, they have log riding. Here, you fall off a log and you get wet. There, you fall off a log and you could die. God bless America. It's a spectacle that draws thousands of visitors from around the world, not only for its beauty, but also for its danger. 
That's because these men are riding titanic logs down a treacherous hill the length of a football field. 13-ton logs that could crush them like insects. For over 1,200 years, the men of this shrine in northern Japan have gathered in a life-threatening reenactment to honor their brave forefathers. Holy men, who once conquered monster logs just like these to construct their temple. The ceremonies begin late in March with the selection of eight huge trees. Once blessed, they're stripped and prepared for a brutal 10-mile journey where amazingly, the logs are dragged by hand. The courageous souls reach their first dangerous hurdle while attempting to cross the Mayagawa River. Plunging into frigid waters, they risk drowning to tug the heavy load to the other side. Once reaching their destination, the monks must decide which men are worthy of risking death. Those deemed lucky enough to ride must be at least 30 years old and must possess strong character and bravery. This man, Oikawa, who has survived the hazardous ride many times, is pleased to find out that his son, Kunihiko, is amongst the chosen. It is now up to Kunihiko to carry on the tradition. With a swift slice of the lines, the monstrous timbers tear down the mountain. But it's a 30-second display of bravery that carries a price. Injuries from collisions are common. In fact, this man would surely have been crushed to death by the huge timber had he not accidentally fallen into a crevasse that saved his life. Luckily, there are no fatalities this year, and Oikawa's son, Kunihiko, manages to hold on and survive the risky ride. It's a tremendous honor for their entire family. <laughs> And for those who weren't able to hang on, they'll have to wait a while for the next festival. The Log Riding Festival happens only once every six years. Ripley's world of unbelievable animals. Paris, France, a city known for chic boutiques and fine food. But one French bistro has become famous not just for its cuisine, but also for its customers. Believe it or not, this restaurant has gone to the dogs, literally. Fred adores pâté, tortilla chips. He likes his meat, uh, medium rare. Um, he, he, he'll take it rare. Uh, he doesn't like it well done. Welcome to Chez Alexa Daniel, where man's best friend sits at the table with his master to enjoy some of the best food Paris has to offer. Les chiens sont habitués à leur, euh, à leur pâté ordinaire. Euh, ils voient sûrement une, une différence, bien sûr. Ça se voit dans leur comportement. The Canine Cafe has been open for just one year and has become the rage of Paris, with eager dog lovers panting for an open table. Meals average around $15 a plate, but the best part, doggy dishes are always half price. Unbelievably, the pampered pooches dine on fine china and silver. There are no water bowls here. The menu includes chicken and rice, followed by every dog's favorite, a hearty meatball platter. And in case you're wondering, the restaurant keeps special plates for its canine customers. I don't worry about hygiene like that. I don't think it's true. I mean, we live with the dog. Why shouldn't we eat with it? And what meal would be complete without something sweet? So for dessert, the dogs finish off with a carob cookie. It's just so uh, typically French. You certainly see their, their dogs are better than foreign uh, tourists. Next, the Shutterbug with an uncanny power over his pets, getting his lizards to pose for some pretty peculiar portraits. They can get out of the poses anytime they like. Plus, 
J.C. Payne owns the biggest ball of its kind anywhere, but wait till you see what it's made of. I just could not believe it, so I had to follow it. And this guy's packing his nostrils with corn, and he claims he'll work them up his nose and pick them out of his eyes. <laughs> the unbelievable act that'll have you squirming in your seat next. Believe it or not. Now, there are all kinds of balls. String balls, rubber band balls, even hair balls. This, the world's largest hair ball, came from a cow. And in the case of one dedicated gentleman in Texas, he's been rolling up a fence material that they call devil's rope for years. And apparently, he too is having a ball. J.C. Payne is a retired bricklayer from Denton, Texas. And this 80-year-old Southern gentleman's fascination for barbed wire will blow your mind. Well, I've hunted wire all up into Kansas and all over the United States, Vermont, New York, and everywhere. We really call it cooning for wire. J.C. started collecting scraps of barbed wire 34 years ago. It was 1967 that I started collecting barbed wire. But over the last four years, his hobby has taken on gigantic proportions. Today, the Texan is proud of this, the largest barbed wire ball ever made by man. It weighs nearly 12 tons, and if unraveled, would stretch over 600 miles. The ball was created using a riding mower and a homemade spooler. JC and his son Jody actually wrapped the wire by circling the ball again and again and again. Okay. JC's swirling mass of metal hasn't received much attention sitting in the center of this 10 acre farm, but that's all about to change. JC will use this forklift and flatbed trailer to move his barbed wire for the first time. But right now, we don't even know for sure if it'll even lift it. After an hour of finagling and several frustrating attempts, the cumbersome ball finally budges. Now it can be loaded onto a trailer to be transported downtown for its debut. Once unloaded and put in its place, it immediately attracts a flock of amazed townspeople. Anything in the middle of it besides a lot of hard work? This Bob boy. Bob boy. <laughs> Bob boy. You know, I think my dad's probably a great spokesman for uh, barbed wire collecting because he is a, a people person and he loves talking with people and he loves talking about the hobby that he loves. The residents of Denton can't help but be fascinated with JC's unique creation, stopping to take pictures and show the overgrown ball of barb to their kids. Others even jumped in their cars to get a better look. I saw this ball going down the highway and I just could not believe it, so I had to follow it. So what's next for the man whose skin-shredding ball takes the love of barbed wire to a whole new level? JC says he wants to make it even bigger. Not for a record and not for the money. No, it's much more rewarding than that. I know people from all over the United States that collect barbed wire, and I've had been in contact with them. And really, the main thing in collecting barbed wire is the friendship of it. Collecting friends. J.C. is not alone in his hobby. There are an estimated 3,000 barbed wire enthusiasts in the United States who collect and catalog over 2,000 types of barbed wire. You can visit one of the six barbed wire museums, including the world's largest display in La Crosse, Kansas. Interested? Well, then you can order this, a barbed wire beginner's kit with over 50 samples to get you started. Just watch your fingers. <laughs> 